My younger brother completed his master's in IT just about the time when the IT sector in India was picking up from the 9-11 induced slowdown. This meant fewer companies recruiting on campus and many people without jobs, my brother included. When he couldn't find a job for about three months post the graduation, and that driving him towards borderline depressed, I did something creative that I feel extremely satisfied in, even today. I convinced a friend of mine who had his own IT firm with a team of about eight people, and was also struggling to meet ends meet at his company, to take my brother as an employee. The conditions for this were, I would pay my brother's salary and my brother should know nothing about it. Instead, my brother should feel like he's getting paid by the company and not be treated differently from others. This went on for about four to six months and it worked like a charm. My brother's confidence went back up and he eventually found a job on his own at a bigger firm. Approximately 14 years later, nobody knows this except for that friend of mine and myself and I intend for it to stay this way. Oh, and my brother is doing very well for himself. He's now leading one of the largest IT organizations in India. My dad is a retired elementary school teacher. He's a 6'6 former linebacker built like a brick shithouse with severe resting bitch face, and goddammit if that man isn't the best person I've ever seen with kids. He makes goofy faces and voices. He asks kids silly questions just to let them indignantly and confidently correct him. He crunches down to their level if he's having a conversation with them, and he isn't afraid to sit on the ground or the floor. My mom always says she fell in love with him the moment she saw him wedged down comically in one of those little tiny kindergarten-sized chairs, hunched over at a classroom table, and helping a kid who was waiting to be picked up after school with their math homework. He has a huge collection of goofy ties and tie pins. He went into work every day wearing a different one, and had one for every special occasion. Sometimes, if I was up early enough, he'd let me pick out his tie for the day when I was little. Don't ever let anyone tell you you can't do something because you're quote, not built right. My dad was amazing with kids, and let me tell you, as a tiny child, there's nothing that makes you feel safer or more secure in a big scary world than having an absolutely stacked giant adult looking out for you. My dad was born to work with kids, and goddammit, kids love him. There was a guy in my neighborhood as a kid that did something for me and my friends. He taught us about computers, and even built us both our own gaming PCs from spare stuff he had, because he was always collecting older electronics and had a ton of spare parts at his house. This was the early 2000s, so nothing crazy, but enough to play Duke Nukem 3D and Quake. It was the first computer in our house, and helped me so much with school and stuff as well. He would often take us to go paintballing, and we also built a cool little go-kart type thing from an old lawnmower engine at one point. He would help us work on our bikes and always had whatever tool we needed. He would even take us with him to do landscaping work sometime if we wanted to, so we could make a little cash during school breaks. It was awesome, and he actually ended up, quote, adopting my friend a few years later after I moved away. My friend didn't know his bio dad, and his mother was pretty distracted with four daughters from different fathers that kept her busy. As the only boy, he felt super out of place and slowly started spending more time at the neighbor's house. Eventually, a workshop-type room was converted into a bedroom, and that became home. Years later, after we had kind of grown apart, I would see him dropping my friend off at high school or run into both of them at the GameStop for a big title release. We would all catch up, and they were both just so happy. My friend was calling him dad by then, of course, and I think they eventually moved out of the state as a family after they got a little money when the neighbor's father passed away. I have not seen them in at least 10 years now, but I hope that they're both doing well wherever they are. There was literally no one around to see it. I was in the Mooney Station in San Francisco, and my train was approaching. A blind man walked past me, tap tap tapping with his white cane, heading right for the tracks. He was going quite slowly, and I was sure he would be able to detect the difference between the ordinary concrete of the platform and the rigid rubber warning strip next to the track. I took a step forward to watch the process, though. He tapped on the strip a few times, and then continued his progress. Although I was confident he would stop when he poked his cane into the empty area above the track, I took another step forward, thinking that I might need to warn him of the train now some 50 feet away. And then, he just toppled in. I suppose he was leaning forward to find the ground and overbalanced. I jumped towards him, grabbed the back of his jacket collar as he fell through the air, and hauled him out of the bodily path of the onrushing train into the safety of the platform. I think now that he had no realization of how close he came how perhaps a half second separated him from being mangled beyond recognition, and he believed that he merely tripped on a stair. 
He thanked me casually, straightened his jacket, and then boarded the waiting train. I posted this in r slash green day, but I'm a senior in high school right now and I wrote for my college admissions essay about my next door neighbor and how our interest of green day got me a father figure. My real dad walked out on us when I was only three and he moved to the US. We moved away to the US as well, but it was only by coincidence I ever saw him again. Even then, he's not an active father. My dad always made empty promises and I had a hard time believing any of his words. He was busy pleasing his wife, so whenever someone said they'd promise they'd make it up to me, just think it was sort of a lie. My next door neighbor, a 55 male, is a guitarist. He recently made a band after they lost their drummer for a while. I quickly became friends with him after he showed me the Billy Joe Armstrong signature Epiphone he bought. I was also interested in guitar. He even installed the new pickup on my Strat. When I got home from school and when he'd get off early from work, I'd knock on his door and we'd talk about guitars and punk rock. He got me into Green Day through American Idiot. He's a house slash building painter, so sometimes I see him driving around town, and he drives past me when I walk home from school. He taught me how to take care of my guitar more. He even remembered the small things I'd mentioned to him, unlike my dad who can't even remember what school I attend. I cry sometimes knowing this dude acts more like my dad than my actual one. Not out of sadness, but joy. I'm glad that he's in my life. My biofather was AWOL all of my life, a new shiny family, so not interested in the old inferior family, and my much-loved granddad died when I was seven, so I was quote adopted by Uncle Jim, who was an elderly widowed and childless neighbor of my grandma. Every Sunday I was walked across the road to Uncle Jim's back gate and left there to spend a couple of hours sat by his coal fire, talking about anything and everything. I have very fond memories of Uncle Jim, and cried as much as I did for my granddad when he passed. I quote adopted another old fellow when I was in my 20s, and we would spend Saturday afternoons in his favorite pub putting the world to rights together. When his health failed, my significant other and I were the ones who battled to get him help, and I was the last person with him before he passed in the hospital after spending hours talking about anything I could think of, and then reading aloud to him when I ran out of things to say. Afterwards, I was the one who was asked to choose the songs for his funeral, because I knew better than his own family what he wanted. He saw more of me than them, and we'd talk about it often, along with where he would want his ashes to go, etc. Those two men, my quote found family, meant more to me, did more for me, and taught me more lessons than members of my own bio family. I'll always be grateful to them. Just after college, my wife and I were planning our wedding. Both of us did not have good jobs and had a lot of debt from college. We were both living at our parents' houses until we could get enough money for the wedding and an apartment. We had a hard time even paying for gas to drive the 30 minutes each way to see each other. Then one day, my mom found an envelope in her mailbox that had my wife and my name on it, so she gave it to us. It didn't have a stamp or an address. Someone had just dropped it in her mailbox. Inside was $300 cash. No note, name, or anything. That $300 went a long way for us at the time. Now that we're on our feet, when my wife and I know that someone is in need, we drop $300 cash in their mailbox in a plain envelope. We've done this three times so far, and we love it each time. One officer that I know found a transient family from Vermont carless and penniless while on patrol. This was in California. They were walking along a main street with all of their belongings. They had no food, little money, and their car had given up the ghost. There were ten people. The two parents, an adult nephew, an adult daughter, and six minor children. They were in desperate need of help. They were close to a local motel, so he told them to walk over there. He drove ahead and bought them two rooms with his own credit card for a few days, and then he went ahead to a nearby grocery store and bought a few bags of groceries to tide them over. Social services could not help, so he contacted the local newspapers and TV news station. As a result of the media efforts, donations poured in, including an offer of work for the father and a donated new car. The family was still poor, but now they had some money, a car, and an offer of work. The officer did not want any publicity for himself, and I still honor that request by him. I live in an apartment complex that has a bunch of little kids. During the original lockdowns in 2020, I would go outside to walk around and just get outside, and one day one of the kids launched a soccer ball my direction, 
and without thinking I head butted the ball back to them and they said something like, Whoa! Do it again! Do that again! I was hesitant at first, not gonna lie, because I'm a bald 31 year old man with a large beard playing with a bunch of little kids. I told them, I'm not sure if your parents would want you playing with a stranger, but you guys have fun. I didn't realize their mom was sitting inside with the window open, watching them, and I hear her yell, Please, kick the ball around with them if you want to. I know you live across the hall, I see you all the time. I proceeded to play soccer with them for the next two hours, and I had a blast. Now, every Friday without fail, a group of kids knock on my door at 6pm because they know I'm off work at that time, and they want me to play some kind of game with them. We played freeze tag last Friday, and it was dope. I cheated and I climbed a tree so they couldn't get me. It makes me feel like a kid again, and it truly is the highlight of my week. The mom also brings me fresh homemade tamales at least every two weeks, and refuses to let me pay for them. At 25, I used all my money to buy my parents a house. They didn't know it was all my money at the time. I sold a tech company for a small exit in 2010. Everyone was extremely proud of me, but no one knew the exact amount I made, but everyone assumed I did really well. In actuality, I only made just over $100,000. I purposefully hid that amount because I wanted to use all the money to buy my parents a house, and I knew that my parents would never accept me buying them a house with the money from my sale. So with no one knowing, I drained my account, after paying taxes, and bought my parents a one-story house in Texas, where I grew up. I did this because they had been living in a small two-story house that, in recent years, could no longer accommodate my sick and increasingly wheelchair-bound dad. Everyone assumed I had made a large amount of money, and that this was one of the many things I used the money on. In reality, this was my exit and my dream gift. This gift allowed my dad to live out the remainder of his life in dignity, and it brought a tremendous stabilizing force to our family life. It stands as the nicest thing I'll likely ever do. Since then, I've made more money, my dad passed away, and my mom lives in that house, now full of great memories. We look back with great joy at those last few years with my dad, and I'm glad I could make it as comfortable for him as possible. <laughs>